Now we're going into topic two of chapter seven, where we will have an explanation of rational numbers as exponents. And these exponents are going to be fractions. So we often think of fractional exponents. Remember, rational numbers was often a synonym for fractions. And we'll be going over these topics. So as we read this, and again, I'm not going to read everything, but uh, kind of going over it with you. And again, I don't like the way they write these. I think they should write it a to the one-third power. 7 to the negative 1 half power, rather than do it this way. But that's an expedience of being able to type it. And this would be 3x to the 4 fifths. Now, all of these are what we call fractional exponents, rational exponents. Now, there is a connection between this expression and radical expressions. So I'm going to put the radical sign, and I will show you the connection. Now, in an exponent, a is the base. So this a will become the radicand. And this radicant has an exponent. Well, the exponent of the radicant is the numerator of the fraction. So that is a 1 there. And the denominator of this fraction is your index number. So that is the relationship of a fractional exponent to a radical expression. Now, this one's a little different. Uh, we'll get to that one in a moment. Let's do this one. So here, what is in parentheses here becomes our radicant. The 4, and again, you should still keep this in parentheses. The 4 becomes our exponent of that fraction. That's the numerator. The denominator becomes our index number. Now, for this one, the first thing we need to do is make this exponent positive, And the same rule applies. We just move it down to the denominator. And now the exponent is positive. So this now becomes 1 over, and then we use our radical sign, and it's 7 to the first power. And the 2, which is in our denominator, becomes our index number. Now, since we don't write 2s when they're there, that would be what this one is. So they're showing you. Uh, a little bit of a value here. And let's go up. So again, I don't like the way they've written this, but this is what it becomes. So let's do these examples. This one is going to be x, radical sign, exponent is the numerator, and the 2. Now, we don't write the 2, and we don't write the 1. So that's how it looks. Now, this is going to be radical sign. Our radicant is a negative 8. Our exponent is a 1, and our denominator is our index number. So here, radicant is 
A, B, C. And since it's to the first power, the whole thing, we can just not write it. And our index number is the denominator. And once you get your pattern set up, it will work out very well. Now, this is anything to the one half power is just going to be the square root of 25 x to the 16th. So the whole thing is to the first power, and this is the index number 2. Now, in this case, by the way, you could also simplify, which is what they're asking, and the cube root of a negative 8 is negative 2, and the square root of 25 is 5, and the square root of the 16th power, can you see that all right? 16 there. And again, there's a 2 there, so just divide the 16 by 2, that will give you x to the 8th which is what they have. Okay, now let's go the other way. We want to convert these to fractional exponents. So our radicant and generally speaking, you'd put your radicant in parentheses. Now, this is all to the first power. So there's a 1 there, in a sense. And we just add our index number as our denominator. And this one, again, our radicant is... x to the third y over 4, put it in parentheses. This is all to the first power. And then our denominator is our index number. And this is just going to be in parentheses 5x to the 1 half power. Remember, the square root of anything is to the 1 half power. And that matches up nicely. Next page. Now, this is a good point. I should have mentioned it already. Why are we putting this in parentheses? Because if we didn't, it would be 5x to the 1 half. And that actually is 5, the square root of, of x here. because then what is raised to a power is only the x, where we want to include the 5. We have to include the parentheses. OK, now when you're using a calculator, it doesn't have to be a graphing calculator, and you want to find the eighth root of, let's say, any number, and we're going to have this, 256, the eighth root of that, you would convert this to this format. This is 1 over 8. And then when you put it in your calculator, you go to 5, 6, and then your calculator usually has what is called a caret sign. And then you put in parentheses 1 divided by 8. That is the fraction, 1 eighth. And then you hit enter, and this will give you then, in this case, it's 2. 
and in this case it's 0.25. So you would put in there this to the 1 fourth power. Okay? Now, when you're asked to graph this, and again, we're not going to ask you to do that because you would use your calculator for it, uh, keep in mind that this is going to be, since it's an even uh, root, an even index number, if you were going for the domain of this, it would be greater than or equal to zero, and you then get... I believe they're going to show you it. And it looks like so. Okay. Okay. Positive rational exponents. For any natural number m, and n does not equal 1, then any real number a for which you have the n root of a exists, you could write in a fractional exponent form, and that means this. This is the preferred way to write it, but we have been writing it this way, and I'll show you why in a few moments here. So write equivalent expressions using radical notation and then simplify. So here, let's write it up here, 27 to the 2 thirds power is equal to the third root right here of 27. And instead of writing this, the square there, I'm going to write it this way. You'll see why in a moment. Because what is the third root of 27? Well, that's going to be a 3. And now we square 3, and we get 9. Okay? And then for this one, they're saying the square root of 25 raised to the third power. Remember, this is the exponent. Two is your index number. They just write it bad here. Three halves. So there's your index number, square root of the base, which becomes the radicant, and then that's raised to the third power. So the square root of 25 is 5. 5 raised to the third is 125. And they have it worked out for you down here as well. And you'll be doing some practice and your quiz mace. Now, for things like this, an interesting thing happens. Well, maybe not yet. So we just want to convert this. So this then becomes 9 to the 4 thirds power. And you can't really do anything with that. And this one becomes 7xy that we will put in parentheses to the 5 fourths power. Okay. Now, when we are doing this in a calculator, remember, we're taking our radicant, which is a negative 23. We're using the caret sign, and we're going to take the fraction 3 fifths. So it's caret three-fifths, enter, and you round it to three decimal places. 
Now you might say, how come it's negative? Well, because it's an odd number here, and a negative is okay. Calculators are great. Years ago when I studied algebra, we didn't have calculators. Okay, now we're going into our negative exponent rule. And once again, x to the negative 2 is simply, remember there's a 1 there, and this is over 1. This is simply going to be, the 1 remains in the numerator, the negative exponent crosses the division bar, and it becomes positive. We do that exactly the same if our exponent up here is negative. Remember, all that that tells us to do is to move it to the denominator. And again, the negative exponent doesn't indicate that this is negative. It's just its position uh, in regard to your division bar. Okay, let's do these here. And since I have lots of room, I'll write them out, but the answers are there as well. So I wrote these out, so it would be a little easier to handle. So this is going to be 1 over 9 to the 1 half, which is 9 to the square root, or 1 to the square root of 9, which is 1 third right there. Now this one again is just going to be 1 over all of this and since we can't really simplify it it's going to be the fifth root that's your index number and this is your radicand 5xy all raised to our fourth power we can't do anything with that. All right, and this one is going to be 1 over the cube root of, this is your index number, the cube root of 64 raised to the second power. Here you can simplify. The cube root of 64 is 4. 4 squared is 16. Now, this one is interesting because is 4x to the negative 2 thirds or just the x? And the answer is it's just the x. So the 4 stays on top. This becomes the third root of x squared or if you want to leave it in, how do they want to leave it here? Uh, they want to leave it in fractional exponent form, but that's okay too. And then this stays on the top as the, if you want it in radical form, the fifth root of y. Okay. Now, for letter E, by the way, this is equiv equivalent to what is written here, and we'll look at that in a moment. In letter E, we have a fraction to a negative exponent. Now, you might recall that we said if we take the reciprocal of this, that can then be to the positive exponent. And that's what we're looking for here. Now, if we want to put that into radical form, this would be the square root of this raised to the fifth. This would be the square root of that raised to the fifth. And let's see what they want here. Okay, they just wanted us to do that. And here they wanted us to leave it in exponential 
fractional exponential notation. Remember, the 4 stays up in the numerator. This is positive, so that stays in the numerator. The only part that's negative is the x. That's what goes down. Okay, we're now going to have a brief little summary of the laws of exponents. So I'll let you, if you want, pause the tape and look over all of these. These are not new laws for us. They're old laws being reviewed. So pause it if you want to look at them. Now, for example, 8 they want us to use these laws to simplify. Instead of writing them all out, I'll just put out a few there. So what do we do here? Well, the rule is we're going to add exponents. So this just becomes 3 to the 4 fifths. And we have simplified that. And what do we do here? And do we want to keep it positive or negative? Well, in division, if in, in multiplication we added, in division we're going to subtract. And if we're going to subtract fractions, they must be the same denominator. And if we want to keep it positive, the 1 stays up there, and then this becomes a to the 2 fourths minus 1 fourth will equal 1 over a to the 1 fourth. Okay. Now, as we do c and d, here, according to the rules, we're going to multiply. So we get 7.2. Now, can we cross-cancel anywhere? Yes. This cancels out, and this cancels out. Oh, I got that. The 2 will cancel with the 4 here, and we get 7 to the 1 half, which is the square root of... 7.2. Again, we use the rules of exponents. Now, here, uh, what can we do? Well, we're going to take the square root of this, but we're going to multiply here. So we have a negative a, and this is all in parentheses still, That's going to be 1 sixth, because we're just multiplying. And then here the 2's can cancel out, and we get b to the 1 fifth. And that, in a sense, is in our parentheses. Okay? All right, let's take a look at this. It's the next page. So here we're just going to add exponents. Here we're going to subtract them. Now in its negative form it would be this, and its positive form would be that. And then here this is, again, just multiplying this. Look, as they put those diagonal lines in there, it really messes up your calculation. That's why I think, you know, the putting it in the proper way. Here they're just using the technique that they can write this on their typewriter there or keyboard. And this is our last answer. It could be this way, or if we make that positive, we bring it down. Okay. So it gives us a good little tool to simplify radical expressions. And then what do we do? Well, we convert them to exponential expressions. We use arithmetic and the law of exponents to simplify, and then we convert back to radical notation 
as needed. Okay, let's set some of these up. So as we look at example A here, we're just converting this from radical form to exponential form. A 3 is our exponent, 6 is our denominator. So this is just going to be 5x to the 1 half power, which is the square root of 5x. Ooh, that's cool. And you recall that in section 1, I was telling you about this, where you can take away the radical sign, use this as your numerator, this as your denominator of your exponent, and this just becomes t to the fourth. Ooh, that's cool. Let's do some of the others. We'll do this one first. So converting it to fractional notation, this will now cancel and become a 4. And now using our technique, this becomes a to the 4th, b to the 8th, c to the 4th. Oh, come on. All right. Let's correct that nicely here. That's better. Okay, and our last one now. Notice this is going to be the third root of x to the one-half power. And internally, this is going to be x to the one-third power times one-half. So this eventually becomes x to the 1 6 power, or the sixth root of x. And that would be the mechanism to get to your answer. So lots of stuff going on here. And as you do your practice and quiz me, you are developing your skill. And there's the last one. Okay, uh, again, this is uh, just about 28 minutes. There's going to be plenty of practice for you and uh, using your skills.